Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you both the 13th and 14th stops on our adventure to visit all 198 Oregon State Parks. These are Prineville Reservoir and Jasper Point State Parks and they're located southeast of Prineville, Oregon. So if you're interested in following that family journey, I'll link the entire playlist in the description box below. Welcome to Investigating the Northwest. This channel is dedicated to exploring the beautiful, mysterious, haunted, and historical of the Pacific Northwest. During the warm weather, we like to get outside as much as possible, so we're exploring the beautiful nature of the Northwest. However, it's getting cooler now, so the park videos will be less frequent until spring of 2023. We wanted to go camping again, but the kids also wanted to have a good time playing in the water. We chose a campground that was right on the Prineville Reservoir, and we made reservations probably like a month ahead of time, so we could spend our daylight hours swimming, then enjoying a night out in nature. However, it didn't work out quite how we'd planned. These parks are right next to each other, just 15 miles southeast of Prineville, Oregon. Both parks are primarily campgrounds with some swimming and boat access. When we arrived, we did notice the reservoir looked a little bit low. We parked at our spot and walked down to the edge just to see if we could access the water, and we absolutely could not. Most of the reservoir was dry, and there was a 15 to 20 foot section of calf deep mud around the water itself. So this is what the reservoir normally looks like. When water levels are high, we're not in a drought, there's been rain or snow melt. But here, it's only at 30% capacity, and all of those grassy sections here should be underwater. So we were really bummed that we couldn't get into the water. We drove over to Jasper Point to see if there was an access point there to get into the low water, but it was the same over there, completely dry, well, not completely dried up, but mostly dry. This, though, was totally our fault. You see, on the State Park website, there are general advisories, which I failed to look at. One of them warned that the water levels could be incredibly low. So if you're planning on heading over to these parks, just make sure you check the water level ahead of time. Now we did make our camping reservations well ahead of time. The water levels could have changed drastically during the time that we made the reservation to the time that we actually arrived. But do you know that the reservoir However, despite the water levels, there is one unique and amazing feature of this park that it has been named one of the International Dark Sky Parks and is said to have an amazing view of the stars at night. You can even fill out a stargazing permit to park during the evening and look at the night sky. However, at the end of the day, it was in the 90s. The primary reason for us being in this camping area wasn't available and the camp spots themselves are really dry and dusty. So you kick up a lot of dirt while you're there. And we were fairly close to home. So we packed up our camping stuff and we went home. Maybe we'll try again next summer. How would I rate this park? Well, unfortunately, for our experience at this particular time, it was not stellar. The beauty, I would say, is an F. Really dry, dusty, and muddy, virtually no water to be seen. Kid-friendly. I would say at this point, about a C. Without the lake, there's not much else for kids to do. There's no play area. There's no hiking trails. Not really much to do except for play in the water and sleep in your tent. There are some programs that they have available for kids, but they didn't have anything at the time that we were there. Fees. There are no fees to use the day use area in both of these parks. And facilities, I also rated a C. Really the only facilities there were the campground facilities and one set of bathrooms by the water, 
But those bathrooms were closed because the water levels just generally decrease the amount of visitor traffic. So they didn't have them open. So they wouldn't have to have staff maintain them. I definitely want to visit the parks again. I'd love to try to come out one night for stargazing, but on a time that we've actually planned, that's our intention to do some stargazing. But this current trip to these parks was a bust. We'll try again some other time. Thank you so much for joining me today to hear about our visit to these parks. And don't forget, if you're interested in learning about the mysteries of the Pacific Northwest, of exploring fascinating locations and discovering local legends, please do subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to receive an email whenever a new video is released. Thank you.